Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to take advantage of the new feature in Photoshop CC placing linked smart objects. Now we could place objects before but they would become embedded in Photoshop. Now we have the option of placing them either embedded or as a link so that if we ever update the original link Photoshop will update as well. What's even better is now we have the ability to also place raw files or DNG raw files uh, as linked smart objects as well. So let's take advantage, let's take a look at how we can take advantage of this workflow all the way through our design process, even going into InDesign and Adobe Muse. So here we go. So I'm in Lightroom, which is where I'm going to start, and I have a raw file here. I'll hit the uh, letter F to bring it up so we can see it full screen and this is the image I'm going to use. Now it could use some adjustments but we'll come back and do those in a moment. Let's first get this over into Photoshop. Now traditionally I would do an edit in or command E and that would edit it in Photoshop but it's going to make a copy of it because Photoshop shouldn't really be editing raw files. The whole point of raw files is that they're non-destructive. So rather than edit this and make a copy what I really want to do is place the original. So I need to show, I need to find it, and I can do that because Lightroom knows where it is. I can do a right click on the image and say show in Finder or show in Windows Explorer, and that will show it to me on the hard drive. So now I know where it is, what folder it's in, so forth and so on. When I head over to Photoshop, I can now place that object. I don't want to copy it, I don't want to drag it in because then it's going to not be a linked smart object. So I go to the file menu where we have the new command, place linked, before we would place embedded, so there was no choice. Now we have a choice between the two, and I want to place linked. This will take me and let me find the file. Again, I'm in the folder where, it's, where it is, and I can now find that same exact DNG file, again, this is a raw image, and place that in Photoshop. Now because it is a raw file, camera raw is going to open up and allow me to make any adjustments I want. But again, I want to make those adjustments and control those adjustments where I like to do them is in Lightroom. So we'll just go ahead and click OK. We're not going to make any adjustments here because Lightroom would just override them anyway. So I'm going to put this in place where I want it to be and then I'm going to hold down my Shift key and scale it down. So now that I've got it scaled down kind of where I want it in position, I'm going to go ahead and lock it in and I'm going to go ahead and save the Photoshop file as of, we, as of right now. So let's go back to Lightroom and fix the exposure problems that we have in this file. So when I head back to Lightroom, I can now go over to the develop module with this and I can make all my non-destructive adjustments. So for example, I can go ahead and uh, see that the I'm losing some detail in the blacks. So I can just drag right on the histogram to fix the blacks. Now I can go in and say, well, I want to fix the exposure too. So let's pump up the exposure just a little bit on this image. But that's really, it's going to overexpose everything else if I get her um, exposed properly. So instead, I'll take advantage of the new radio filter. And with the radio filter, I'm just going to drag out a nice big oval. And of course, I can rotate that oval. I can pull it down, get it in position the way I want, and then I can make my adjustments to it. So we can say that we don't really adjust the saturation, but we do want to adjust the exposure. So we can put like a nice little spotlight right on her to brighten her up without over uh, exposing the background. Okay, so now that we've done that, I want to write these changes into this file. Now again, non-destructively, because Lightroom, any adjustment I make, I can always come back and undo it, redo it, adjust it further, because it's not harming the pixels. It's writing it as metadata. But to actually get that metadata into the file itself immediately, I can do that with a Command S on the keyboard for Mac or Control S on the keyboard for Windows, just like you would do a save. So I'm saying update the metadata in the file. So now when I head back to Photoshop, Photoshop will update the metadata and, or see that the metadata has been updated and update the linked smart object. And again, I'll save the Photoshop file. Now when I head over to InDesign, InDesign says, oh, I see you've made a change to that um, page that you placed in InDesign from Photoshop. Update the link and now I've got the change. Head over to Adobe Muse, click on the file, 
Oh, Muse says the same thing in its link um, or in its assets panel that I now can do an update the asset and it will update my web page for Muse as well. So Muse is updated, InDesign's updated, Photoshop's updated, all from Lightroom. Well, let's do another adjustment. Let's head back over to Muse, or Lightroom. And in Lightroom, I want to apply a preset. I've got some presets here, some custom ones that I've made through throughout um, you know, my use of uh, Lightroom. I've got a nice brown split tone, a burgundy split tone. I think I'll go with the burgundy one. So I, t I click the burgundy split tone. It applies it, again, non-destructively. I can always go back and turn that off or step back through the history. I save the metadata, switch back to Photoshop. Photoshop sees that there's been a change, updates the Photoshop file. I save the Photoshop file, head over to InDesign. InDesign sees there's an update. I update the InDesign file. Muse will see there's an update once I click off of it and back on again. Muse can now update the asset for my website as well. So completely updating my entire design process, starting with a raw file coming out of Lightroom, placing it into Photoshop, and then making it part of my design, saving the Photoshop file, placing it into Adobe InDesign, placing it into Adobe Muse, to update my brochure and my website all at the same time. And as a photographer, I can always go back to Lightroom and continue to make refinements to that, um, to that file. So, as you can see, placing linked smart objects, even with raw files, is pretty cool that I can now affect my entire design process from one asset. With that, thanks for watching this episode of the Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White. Again, thank you.